Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for Chapter 15, the first video cast. Chapter 15 is equilibrium. In an equilibrium, we find out that you've been lied to. Reactions not only go from left to right, but they're also reversible, and they go from right to left. And so from now on, forevermore, we're always going to write two arrows, one going from left to right and one going from right to left. Now, we still will call these reactants, and we'll still call these products, because the left side are always called reactants, and the right side are always called products. But the reaction is reversible. Now, to find out where we sit as far as equilibrium goes, we'll go back to chapter 14 and take a look at the rate of the forward reaction versus the rate of the reverse of the reaction. And if we write the rate expression for the forward reaction, rate would equal K. I put a little F here for forward, meaning left to right times the concentration of A, and we'll just pretend it's to the first power. And then the rate of the reverse of the reaction, now going from right to left, would be equal to K with a little R down below, meaning reverse, times the concentration of B, and we'll pretend it's to the second power, and it's a second order reaction. Now we could set these equal to each other because that's where we're at when we're at equilibrium. The rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse. And so we could take each one of these parts and set them equal to each other. So KFA is equal to KRB squared. So they'll be equal to each other because they'll be going back and forth and back and forth in its comp competition that's equalized. Now doing some algebra, I'm going to take and I'm going to solve or manipulate this equation just a little bit. And I'm going to bring KR over here to this side. And I will solve and take KA, concentration of A, and bring it over here to the right side. Now, this KF, rate constant forward, divided by rate constant reverse, is now given a new name brand new name. This small k forward divided by small k r is renamed capital letter K, big capital letter K, and it's called the equilibrium constant. Equilibrium constant. Make sure you know that it's a capital letter K, so you don't get it confused with the lowercase letter K, but you'll see it enough that you'll get, uh, well, used to seeing it. Sometimes it's written other ways. As you've been in chemistry here before, you know that there's like five different ways to say the same thing for everything. Well, there's at least seven different ways to write the equilibrium constant. Sometimes you'll see it all of these different ways. You'll see it written as K, capital K. They're all capital letters, by the way. With a small C down below it, usually C stands for concentration. Capital, because there's concentrations, obviously, in here, right? Concentrations. You'll see it written K sub P, because it can sometimes be written in terms of pressures, partial pressures. You'll see it written K with a small EQ down below it, just meaning we're at equilibrium, which that's what's assumed for all of them. You'll see it written as K with a small A down below it, because it's the equilibrium of an acid. You'll see it written as K with a small B, or K sub B, because it's the equilibrium of base. You'll see it written as K with a SP down below it, because it's what's called the solubility product for things that are only partially soluble. So just get used to that it's a capital K and it always means the same thing. It always means products, concentrations, or pressures to the power of its coefficient divided by the reactants' concentrations to the power of its coefficients. I think that worked. Products divided by reactants to the power of the coefficients. This tells you a lot about the reaction because if it's products divided by reactants, you can put the concentrations in there and it can tell you, do you have more of the top thing? Do you have more products if the number is bigger than one? Or do you have more reactants? Do you have more of the bottom thing right here? And therefore, do you have more of the thing on the left side of the equation? Where do you sit? So if you have a reaction where the equilibrium constant is equal to K, remember, I'm sorry, equilibrium 50. The equilibrium constant is equal to 50. You can always write this as the number divided by one. Know that the top is the products and the bottom is the reactants. And just ask yourself the question, which one's bigger, the top or the bottom? 
So the top is bigger, so that means the products are favored. There's more of the thing on the right-hand side than the left-hand side. Or if you had a number like 0 .005, you could take that number and write it over 1, and then you'd say, oh, 1 is bigger. So that means there's lots of reactants. There's lots of things that, there's more of those than there are products. This tells you which is favored. That's the fancy word in chemistry. Are the products favored or the reactants favored? In this case, the products would be favored. In this case, the reactants would be favored, and there'd be more of each of them. Each, which particular one has the larger number? So let's take an example reaction right here. N2 plus 3H2 goes to 2NH3. And let's write the equilibrium constant expression. Let's write this. Let's write the equation. Lots of times it's called an equilibrium constant expression, but it's also known as the equilibrium constant equation. Now, you only write this expression or equation with aqueous or gaseous things, only things that can have concentrations or pressures. You never include solids or liquids. You never include solids or liquids, only things that have concentrations or pressures. Since these are all gases, they'll all have pressures, and so you can write products on the top divided by reactants on the bottom to the power of their coefficients. Products on the top divided by reactants on the bottom to the power of their coefficients. So the products are NH3, and I'm going to write it in terms of pressures because they're gases. So I would put pressure of NH3 raised to the second power because there's a 2 here in front of it, and that's its coefficient, divided by the reactants, and the reactants are N2 and H2, and so I take the pressure of N2, raise that to the first power, times, that's a time sign, make sure nobody puts a plus sign there, it's a time sign, the pressure of H2 raised to the third power because that's its coefficient. This is called the equilibrium constant expression or equilibrium equation. Notice that pressures are sometimes used, but concentration or brackets are okay for all aqueous and gaseous things. It's okay to use the brackets all the time as long as you raise it to the power of its coefficients. P is sometimes used, but usually only for gases. So, is this okay? Sure. It's also written as brackets, concentration of NH3 to the second power, N to the first power, H to the third power. can be written either way. So, we're now going to talk about manipulating the equilibrium constant. We know how to kind of write it now. But how do we manipulate numerical values of it? And there's three different ways. Three different ways. Okay, way number one is if you reverse the reaction, like turn it around. Way number two is if you multiply or divide the reaction by a number. Multiply or divide the reaction by a number. And then way number three is if you add or subtract reactions. Add or subtract reactions from one another. So here's what happens to each one. If you reverse the reaction, then the reactants become the products and the products become the reactants. So this becomes upside down. The fancy name for that is it's the inverse or what some people say is the reciprocal. Is that how you spell reciprocal? Kind of like that. It's the upside down. So you take the inverse of whatever the numerical value is if you reverse the reaction. Now, if you multiply or divide a reaction, that means that you're changing the coefficients in front of each one. And since you take the coefficients and those are the exponents, that means if you multiply it, or divide it, you raise it to that power. So you raise it to the power of whatever you multiplied or divided by. So if you multiplied it by one half, you'd raise everything to the one half power. That's another way of saying dividing, but same thing. And then if you add or subtract several reactions together, then you multiply the case. If you would subtract reactions, you'd divide the case. All 
All right, let's do an example of that. Here we go. Uh, here's a reaction. 2NH3 goes to N2 plus 3H2, and we're going to say that K is equal to 10 at this particular temperature. Equilibrium constant doesn't change as long as you don't change the temperature. Once you change the temperature, the equilibrium constant changes. We'll talk more about how we can change and manipulate that later on in this chapter. But here's a reaction, and we're going to take a look at manipulating this reaction several different ways. So, if K is equal to 10 for this reaction, what would K be equal to for this reaction? So notice the difference between here and here. What happened from this one to this one? So you notice we took it from here and we flipped it around. What do you do if you do the reverse of the reaction? You do the inverse of the reciprocal. If k is equal to 10, then for this one, k would be equal to 1 over 10, or 0.1. Another beautiful thing about k, you'll love this, k does not have any units. Capital K, the equilibrium constant, has no units. It's unitless. You don't have to worry about that. But uh, don't get it confused with the small letter k from chapter 14, where those uh, rate constants have units all the time. All right, let's look at a second time. Here's a reaction. Notice it's related to this one, but it's a little bit different. Okay, what happened from this reaction to this reaction? Okay, it went from 2 to 1 half. It went from 1 to 1 fourth. It went from 3 to 3 fourths. Oh, what did we do? Some people say we divided it by 4, or some people say we multiplied it by 1 fourth. Either one's okay, right? Either one's okay. So if you take and you multiply or divide a reaction, what do you do? You raise it to that power, right? So then what we'd have to do is we'd have to take 10, which was the reaction before right here. Oops. I, it looks like I'm missing uh, the, I, I put a plus sign here. I think I meant to put arrows right here. Sorry about that. I meant arrows, just like here. Arrows right here. Plus sign right here. So since we uh, multiplied this reaction by one fourth, we would take the K and we would raise it to the one fourth power. Or you could write it as 10 to the 0.25 power. That would be okay. And then here's letter C. Here's, a sec here's one more example. Notice from this reaction to this reaction, what happened? From this reaction to this reaction, what happened? So you can see we did, I think, two things to it. Isn't the reaction turned around? Is that right? Okay. And then secondly, I think it's multiplied by 2 because there's a 2 here, a 6 here, and a 4 here. So you have to do two things to it. So first of all, if you flip it around, 10 would have to be the inverse, so it would be 0.1. And then we multiplied it by 2, so what do you have to do if you multiply it by something? Raise it to that power, right? So it would have to be 0.1, and then we'd have to raise it to the square, or to the second power. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so, right? Did I have the arrows in the right place? Sorry about those arrows right there. All right, last example. Let's say that we have two reactions that we have to add together. So here's two reactions. I haven't done this one before, so I hope I don't screw it up. Here's a reaction. A plus B goes to C plus D. K is equal to 2. Here's another reaction. C plus F goes to G plus A. K is equal to 6. Add these two reactions together, and then let's figure out what K is. So when you add these two reactions together, take the things on the left-hand side and write them. So it would be A plus B plus C plus F, arrow, goes to C plus D plus G plus A. Is anything the same on both sides? A's would go away. Anything else? C's would go away. Anything else? So we end up with the reaction B plus F goes to D plus G. Now when you add the reactions, what is the rule? Add the reactions, you have to multiply the K's. Oh, all right. So what's the K for this one? 2. What's the K for this one? 6. What's 2 times 6? 12. There's our equilibrium constant for this new reaction. Got it?
Those are some manipulating K questions. Last sample problem of the day, let's calculate K from some equilibrium data. And I'm going to call on a problem from your book. If you're in the 13th edition of the book, it's on page 644, and it's sample exercise 15.7. If you don't have that book, like in the future we might not have that book, then um, I'll just put the problem up here on the uh, screen. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work the problem right from the book right here. It's a little bit smaller, but I'll read it to you, and then you can kind of zoom in and see it. It says, after a mixture of hydrogen and nitrogen gases in a reaction vessel is allowed to attain equilibrium at 472 Celsius, it's found to contain 7.3 atmospheres. I'm going to write these data down. H2 is equal to 7.38 atmospheres. And uh, the nitrogen is equal to 2.46 atmospheres. And the NH3 is equal to 0.166 atmospheres. And it says it's attained equilibrium. So these values are after equilibrium is reached. So the forward rate of the reaction is equal to the reverse rate of the reaction. If these were not at equilibrium, well, we'll hit those kinds of problems um, in the future, and they get tougher. But it says, from these data, calculate the equilibrium, and it says K sub P right here for the reaction, and then it gives you the reaction we've been working on. So N2 plus 3H2 goes to 2NH3. All of them are gases, and so all of them will go into the equilibrium constant expression. I'm going to move the book here for a second, so then I've got a little bit more space to write. So first thing to do is to write the equilibrium constant expression. So write K. In this case, it's K sub P because it's in terms of pressures. So take your products. That would be NH3 and raise that to the second power. Divide it by the reactant. So that would be N2 raised to the first power times the other reactant, H2, and raise that to the third power. Now take your equilibrium concentrations or pressures and plug them in. So for NH3, it would be point 166. Remember, there's no units, so it's beautiful. You can just go ahead and put the number in and raise it to the power. N2 is 2.46 and raise that to the first power. And H2 is 7.38 atmospheres and raise that to the third power. Now you've got some work to do on your calculator because you've got to cube something, first power something, and you've got a second power something, and you've got to divide it all and not screw up the order of operations with your calculator. If you do all this correctly on your calculator, you should end up with 2.79 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then the question follows, are the reactants favored or the products favored? Remember how to tell this? Remember, this is a ratio of products to reactants. So take this number and write it over 1 and ask yourself, which number is bigger? Are the products bigger or are the reactants bigger? Reactants are bigger. So that means the reaction lies far to the left, and there's lots of reactants, and there's very, very few products. That's what the equilibrium constant can tell us. Where do we sit as far as what part of the reaction is favored, or what part of the reaction has more stuff or less stuff? Next week, zillions of equilibrium constant problems. Good luck with your equilibrium.